Hello everyone and welcome to Orange Beach, Alabama, site of the 2017 NAIA Women's Soccer National Championships. I'm Todd Panula and I'm here to bring you all of today's exciting action as we begin the quarterfinal round with an exciting matchup between number one Martin Methodist College, the Red Hawks, going up against the nine seed, the Benedictine College Ravens. Ian's route has been slightly easier. The nine seed defeated Trinity Christian 3-0 in the opening round. And then in the second round, they defeated Mobile, the host say, the host school, excuse me, by the score of 1-0. That was back on Monday. So these two teams should be well rested coming into this contest. And it should be an excellent match to see who will gain the seed in the semifinals. Today's game is brought to you in partnership by the Gulf Shores and Orange Beach Sports Commission, the University of Mobile, Turbo Sports Group, the NAIA and Stretch Internet, the NAIA's official video streaming provider. Benedictine is led by a couple good scorers. Rosie McShane led all goal scorers for them with 16, followed closely by Emily M. Buell through the regular season portion. Their team was not necessarily known for goal scoring, though, as they uh, scored 71, but they only allowed 13 on the year, keeping that going with that second round 1-0 victory. So they have uh, really been fairly stout defensively. On the flip side, 109 team goals scored for Martin Methodist, led by the all-time NAIA leading scorer now in Bieni Cabral. As she now has 53 on the season, 52 coming in here to the final site, and then scored an all important goal in their 2 2 draw and eventual 4 2 PK shootout win. So we're underway here with Benedictine heading right to left, and logic would dictate that Martin Methodist will be going the opposite direction. Fairly calm day here so far. Wind blowing slightly right to left and from corner flag to corner flag across your screen away from you, but it doesn't look like it's blowing too much in terms of affecting the contest all that much. Early chance here for Benedictine as they try to get it in towards the box and that's cleared away by Sunaga. Only as far as the near side touch line though is going back in on the attack is Molly Schmidt. Hands it over now to McShane who just peels around and they work a little bit of a triangle passing. That one way too tall even for the height of Myers. Benedictine ends up with it as they've come away with some good possession here in the opening couple minutes. Not quite two minutes in here. Served in towards the box in an early in the quarterfinals. The seeding would have them going down. But right now they've had the better of the chances, better of possession as well. And it'll be interesting to see how this plays out for Martin Methodist. Slicing through the defense once again, Benedictine starting to ask a few more questions, pressing forward, coming back towards the middle and out of the near side, trying to chase it down is Lurie. Sunaga right on her, Lurie got the cross in. And Miskin to the far side, now McShane. Miss it again. Abby Hare over the NAIA logo and intercepted, but given right back. Ravens looking for some open space, not too much to be had, and McShane was hit with a nice hip check that was quality enough for the NHL. Nakamura sees it taken down by Romano, but she's shaken up. And she caught a lot of that foot as well as the ball. Trying to run it off. Benedictine would really like to keep her on the field if possible, but 
She's moving around rather gingerly, as you can kind of see her bending over at the waist towards the top of your screen. Miskin up for Romano. Showing no ill effects right now as she turns on the afterburners, tries to cut it inside. Unofficially, of course, it would feel like it favors Benedictine a little bit right now. They've had the ball under control a little bit more. Seems like most of Martin Methodist's plods up the field have mostly been through the air. Sagara. Had been making the run, but it didn't find its way on through. Benedictine with the crossover. Knocked down by Myers. Space closed down as Gonzalez was right there. Ever present right now in the midfield, she's been a good defensive force for the Red Hawks. Myers again, the player who is guarded, whereas they are not, they have space in front. So sub came in just moments ago. They took out Anna Romano. Coming in was Sammy Natalie. So Coach Robley, obviously uh, trying to get one of his prime strikers uh, a little bit of rest. And that was uh, going to be a nice play, but an even better defensive spot as that one was thwarted by Miskin. Here's the aforementioned Natalie, dropping it back over towards the right back. Not enough movement to give up possession yet. McShane puts on a little feint at Nakamura not having any of it. Intercepted once again by Mathis this time. Looking up for Cabral, and again, always a defender right in her back pocket. Heacock was the one to make the steal this time. Cabral keeps it in along the end line, trying to play it in. Second attempt, there's a shot! And Lofman was right there, smothering the rebound. Rebound. Now more space in front for Cabral. She's gonna take a long distance one. And it only missed by about three feet or so. Had it taken as there was somebody right on her backside. Hair for Natalie. Foot stuck out, but possession not gained. Cutting it through the front. Trying to find a seam again. That white jerseys or black jerseys, depending on what end of the field you're on, just always seem to converge right as you try to go through what you perceive to be a hole just moments ago. Now McShane going to lob one up towards goal. But that kind of died there at the very end. Needed to be just a couple feet higher, and then that would have really tested Dumond. Once again, towards the edge of the 18-yard area, McShane able to lace one off the crossbar. Water left out in the sun. Hare drops it back. Quick passes along the backside, but it doesn't do you too well in the attack. Gonzalez, and now McShane for the Ravens. Myers able to spin it away from pressure as Nakamura, who is ever present on the defensive end, almost got played on back. Lurie.
far hand side now. Sanders looking for McShane. It will get through to Natalie. Lurie puts on the move and then seeks to cross it up front. Kelly brings it down. Nakamura in to help. And that goes off the post and in. They score! What a shot. Dumont didn't think anything of it. There was nothing she could do on the flight of the ball. But I think she thought it was going wide. It ends up clinging off the post and rebounding right into the goal. So Benedictine strikes with just under eight and a half to go here in the first. Protest there from Nicole Kelly. McShane as the Ravens starting to seize control a little bit here. Coming over towards the near side for Kelly. Drops it back for Lurie. Going towards the edge of the box. 40th minute of play, one nil your score. Benedictine scored with about eight and a half minutes left here in the first. Ravens content now to just keep possession here, perhaps for the rest of the half. Obviously, they're not going to settle in into any kind of defensive shell quite yet, but they're not necessarily going to press up the field either. Gonzalez able to throw off Kelly just a bit, but she still comes away with possession after it was flicked on by Hare. Kept nicely by M. Buell. Now to the right hand, left hand side for Lurie. Trying to go back inside. Sunaga spotted it well. Martin Methodist lost track of it in the sun. And based on body language alone, you can't figure that Coach Austin is too pleased right now. You see him there at the top of your screen, hands on hips. Hoping for something to come of this as Cabral tries to put one towards goal here in the final minute of play in the first half. But once again, just a defender always around me, any Cabral. There. So a fresh 45 for both teams to kind of hit the reset button. Benedictine obviously looking to take advantage of their one goal lead and stretch it out to two. And now here's a chance for Kelly. Back and now Cabral has a little bit of space, lays it on back for Sagara, but that's closed down quickly as coming down to take advantage of that one was Sanders. And then a big save there as Lofman had to stretch over to get a piece of that one. Advantage of some open space space and go towards goal. McShane filtered on through. Now it's with Sanders right off of the defender. Sanders calling for a handball as are several of the Ravens fans in attendance. The official not having any of it. Brought through the middle for Myers. Far side now, McShane, now Hare. Space closing down, Kelly looking for a little bit of open. Myers drops it. Sanders, Myers again. Near side for Kelly, she's got the lone goal. Ladaga able to steal it away. Reed closed down quickly. Trying to slice that one through to Cabral again. 
And again, I think that from a Red Hawk perspective is perhaps the more disappointing thing. Not necessarily that you're trying to get it to Cabral, but, but that is the only option right now. Nobody looking to go towards goal other than that long shot coming from Sagara. But the Red Hawks on their heels a little bit here for Cabral too quickly. Kelly looking for Ambule and she is folded up like a chair. McShane put it in towards the middle. Kelly, McShane again, Nakamura intercepts. Sagara able to avoid Ambule. Now Reed, one touch back, going over the top. Now Cabral, perhaps with a little bit of space, trying to muscle off the defender. Cabral, and it was blocked. Ladaga mishit it. That allowed McShane to pick it up. Miskin to McShane. Sanders gives it right back. McShane for Kelly. And Buell with pressure from behind. Miskin. Sonaga again. Hasn't been her best of days, but still time to pick that up. Here's Cabral with a little bit of space and once again blocked. Cabral again and it's blocked once more. Headed down and probably would have been better served to chest it and then knock it over towards the side. Sanders, too strong for Kelly, gets a second opportunity and finds the intended target. Gonzalez sticking out a leg, not coming up with anything and then just kind of stubbing her toe as Kelly tries it again. Now here's Sagara up the near hand side, cutting it back through the middle, but there's a lot of pressure there. They seem to like to deal in those tight quarters, but it hasn't been working out too well today. 28 taken, 22 were put on target, so she's definitely accurate when she tries. But not necessarily the name of the player that you would expect to come up with a big moment to switch over to Caroline Ladaga as opposed to trying to come back in this one. So they have to refocus very quickly. Now an open opportunity. Now Sagara had a great sliding challenge there as Sanders makes the steal. Kelly looking for more glory. She put in some good minutes there at the end of the first half. And we still have not seen Anna Romano come back into the game. Romano standing up over on the far sideline, but socks down around her ankles and no shin guards on either, so perhaps her day is done as well. Time inching along for Benedictine as they can sense a potential semi-final round berth. Looking for that insurance goal. Sanders lays it off for Myers. Towards goal! Spend it on the bench. <laughs> Kept in bounds by Duque. Miskin. Gets it back from McShane. Off of Myers, almost a miscue there as Cabral was in the area. But now it's turning into a training ground exercise as Martin Methodist just getting passed around as though they're cones set up in a drill. Intercepted by Sagara. She's off to the races. Miskin trying to chase her down, gets to it from behind, and then Sagara careless on the pass. 
McShane looking to go the other way, but in no great hurry to do so. Sanders from the touchline. Benedictine winning it in the midfield once again. Mc Miskin. Myers was calling for it. Instead, they go up the sideline. Ambuel, strong run up the sideline. And Mathis has no choice but to play it out. Lincoln Robley, if Martin Methodist manages a comeback, we'll talk to coach Will Austin. Right now, the players only focused on the final 10 minutes. Eighty-first minute of play. A thirty-seventh minute goal from Nicole Kelly has stood the test of time so far. Sanders plays it back. Miskin surveys the field, takes a couple dribbles, and then her pass was tipped but not intercepted. McShane back for second of the game, comes up the left-hand side, but then puts on the brakes. Ladaga, once again, gingerly putting that left foot through. Mathis, she scores! Set up by Ladaga, Mathis able to take advantage as it went over the top of the defense. And we've got a tie game with just a shade over three minutes left to go here in the second half. So basically pushing the reset button. We've started overtime the way we started the game with Martin Methodist, as I mentioned, going left to right, Benedictine hoping that that will serve them well as they scored their goal in the first half going in this direction. Dean just puts it back into play with a short kick. One touch passing coming up the sideline. Lurie looking for a little bit of space. Slips one through the midfield. Sagara gets it back from Cabral. Returns the favor, lobbing one over the defender. Cabral chipping it to herself, right in the middle of the pitch, over towards the right-hand side. Good shot! But well spotted by Lothman and used her feet to get into position. Kelly with the goal, played it on back. And remembered, Benedictine has done all this without Anna Romano. She was the hero in their second round game with the lone goal. But she picked up a knock fairly early in this one. And her substitute, Kelly, ended up scoring the goal that they were hoping would be the game winner. Now she might set up something here. She has gained herself a free kick. McShane and Myers both in a spot to take this one. McShane raises her hand. She's going to left foot it towards the back post. And Dumont struggled to get to it, but got a point left in the first period of extra time. Once again, towards the edge of the six-yard area. And Myers got a head on to it, but not quite on goal. Here in this tournament, their best finish was a third-place finish. And their record is 8-4-1 here at the championships. Penalty kick, at least not within the run of play. Towards the edge of the six yard area, bicycle kick attempt, and then the shot comes and over the goal. Hare, but mishandled by Wiggins. Hare towards the middle of the field. McShane was making a run over here on the near side, but she peels back out towards the touch line. And Buell, McShane with Ladaga right on her. Looking for the block, got the cross in, loose in front, and they shoot over the goal! Kelly could have been the hero for a second time by the official. 
Sanders not giving a yellow card. Not that the foul in and of itself would have deserved one, but you figure that was her second hard foul in uh, about five minutes or so, so it could have been a continuation. They look for McShane. She settles it down around one defender, but the touch was too heavy. Final minute of play here in extra time. Looking like we're heading towards the kicks. Cabral trying to have something else to say about it. Around Sanders, Cabral with a player still right on her. That's Miskin. Cabral tried to center it, but again, just too many black jerseys in the way. Back to Orange Beach, Todd Panula along with you here as we are headed to the penalty shootout between the number one seed, Martin Methodist, and the number nine seed, Benedictine. Not too many penalty kicks taken during the regular season for Benedictine. They connected on two out of the three that they were awarded. Martin Methodist, two for two in their attempts. And obviously those came in the run of a game. Martin Methodist, uh, obviously a little bit more adept at this recently as they won four to two over Marion in the first round. So the first kick is going to be taken by Benedictine. And Katie Miskin will step to the spot to face off against Caitlin Dumond. So Miskin steps up to it, gets the go-ahead from the official, taking it with the right foot, and puts it into the side netting. Nakamura going to take it for Martin Methodist. Nakamura coming from straight away, so she'll have her options of sides to put it in, and she goes straight away. Laughlin almost had time to dive back the other direction. She took a step over towards the right, thinking that that's where the shot was going. It went direct, but Nakamura looking like she was kind of calling off those shots down the middle after that one had gone in. McShane now. And McShane scores as well. So both teams looking pretty comfortable taking their kicks so far. Three players up, three goals in. So Cabral will step to the spot take the second one for Martin Methodist. Hoffman eyes are up, Cabral steps to it, takes a shot, and right into the bottom of the net. Emily Ambuel will step to the spot now for the Ravens. Another right-footed shot, absolutely no movement this time from Dumond. And a perfect three for three now for the Ravens. And Lyra Mathis, the lone goal scorer in regulation. Gonna try to keep her team alive here. And she puts it wide. She tried to cut it a little too finely. Needed to strike that one. I, it's been a pet peeve of mine 
throughout time. Never liked those little scoop shots with the side of your foot. Just strike it, put it in, goalkeeper. That's my p background. We're guessing half the time. You put it past us with some strength, and it's difficult to stop. Getting a palm to it was Dubon, but the goal counts. So Hare gets the goal, and now an all-important strike here for Ashlyn Wiggins. Wiggins with a left footer, and that threw off the goalkeeper. And that was enough. So Duque with a chance potentially to end it if she can score here. Duque steps up, not too much of a run up, and she scores! Benedictine are the winners. The number nine seed with the upset. They will be going to the semifinals. All right, and we're back with Coach Lincoln Robley. Coach, uh, it's got to be pretty exciting going on to the national semifinals. Uh, it's great. Um, the ladies have been playing well. Martin Methodist is an outstanding team. Uh, we had a fantastic game today. Um, I think the game going to penalty kicks just showed quality on both sides. And uh, very proud of the ladies and um, proud to be representing Raven Nation. It wasn't necessarily the way you drew it up, uh, obviously, with Anna Romano going out as early as she did. But right. her substitute in Nicole Kelly came in and gave you a little bit of specialness there with that goal. Oh yeah, Anna hit a great goal um, in our game against Mobile as a winner, and we've got incredible depth on this team. Uh, Nicole Kelly is a fantastic player, one of the best shooters here at this tournament. She came in, took a play on hit, absolute rocket shot. Um, super player, super goal, and it gave us a great boost. Heading into the overtime period, obviously it had to be a little bit rough giving up a goal that late. What did you tell your players to kind of keep their heads up? It's real. It's what we're about. You know, leaders, scholars, champions. Um, nothing gets tough. We are unified together. We get stronger. If there's anything that might get in our way, we just come together and fight. We want, if there's anything that's difficult, it's not for us. We thrive in it. We loved it. We invited the pressure and uh, very proud of the team right now. Glad to be getting back to the Final Four. Well, good luck in the next round. We'll see you tomorrow, or uh, Friday, I should say. That one will be a, an early kickoff. Uh, they're going to face the, mid the winner of uh, Westmont against uh, Southeastern. So that should be a good game coming up here in just a little bit. For Coach Lincoln Robley, for everybody here at Turbo Sports, we'll see you next time as we continue on with our coverage of the 2017 NAIA Women's National Championship brought to you by Turbo Sports and Stretch Internet.